Hi everybody, this is Chris. And this is Matt. And this is somebody who needs no introduction. This is Duke Nukem. The man you know and might love. The man who is probably inadvertently behind us doing this show. Right, right. We came together and forged a friendship on on Duke Nukem multiplayer, specifically the the first level of Duke Nukem. Mm-hmm. We have probably logged more time playing the first level of Duke Nukem uh, than anyone, I would guess. <laughs> I doubt that, but we're up there. We're we're in the top. We're five. up there. Um, Before I get into that, like, I, there's a pause there because there's like it's so many directions I want to head with this, so many things because there's a friendship and a game and, and everything else to talk mm-hmm. about. There's a lot of stuff here. You know what's missing? What? A review. We don't have a review here. Right. <laughs> there's no right. We will here. not be doing any kind of review. So if you're here for a Duke review, why? You know what this is. We all know yeah. what this is. Don't it's be a... mean to us in the comments about it. Don't. Yeah. You know, don't make fun of us. We're yeah. just we're just trying to have a good time. We're just trying to all know? have fun. Play a game. Yeah. In this case, Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, it's 25 years old as of January. That's why we picked this month to do it. Even though it physically makes me sick to play it. This yes. Is, this is the sort of yes. torture I put my body through for you, the viewers. You're welcome. Support us on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Support Chris's drama mean on Patreon. <laughs> and I don't get why, because going back to when we used to play this in 1996 mm-hmm. from 3D Realms, uh, you and I would play for hours. Hours upon hours. So I, I have a few theories. Okay. One is that you're just old. Entirely possible. Now. I have to read like this now. I have to tilt my head back and read oh, under God. my glasses. I've reached oh, that year. Oh, buddy. You, hey, I wasn't there where I when I was your age, so you've got like... I know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> looking into the, the future every thing. time. It's Ugh. coming. My second theory is that we did not use mouse look. Yes. We used keyboard look because we didn't know any better. And my third theory... Yet. <laughs> no no there were no mice at all we well, had no, mice are you kidding was, no this was a dos game for us like we hadn't switched to windows oh but we had like windows 95 or windows 3.1 like, did we yeah we had those ugly like kind of off-white ergonomic microsoft mice and things like that oh you're Th- right this is that era yeah we had we had mice but we definitely like you can't use a mouse for gaming. That's stupid. No. Use a mouse for, like, solitaire, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my third theory is that the frame rates are so much higher and everything is much... It It is uh, definitely faster on modern hardware. And this modern version that we played is way f- faster paced than it used to be. Mm-hmm. It was always a fast-paced game, but now it's, like, just balls to the wall speed demon stuff right and i've got the single player on right now because i wanted to show what most people are going to see when they play for a little bit we do have a multiplayer version between the two of us we'll put on here in a little bit too yes but um but yeah like our like we worked together when this game was out so and we worked together and we lived together and so The daily routine was we'd go to work together, come home by way of Taco Bell, play Duke Nukem until Super Globetrotters came on at 2 in the morning, then fall asleep on different chairs and couches in the living room, even though we both had beds to go to. Right. And then get up and do it again. And that was every day for like a summer and a spring and like about a year, maybe, maybe three seasons, but... A beautiful year. So good. And, and like occasionally we would go to the Denny's all you can eat buffet. Mm -hmm. It it wasn't a buffet though. They brought it out to you. It was like classier than a buffet. (laughs) It's all you can eat breakfast. (laughs) They'd keep bringing it out. Oh, those hash browns, dude. I still think about them. I wrote checks until they told me to stop. (laughs) Yeah. 
Oh, they the knew us, but not in a anymore. good way. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we were nice. We were nice kids. Yeah. But that was sort uh, of the era this is from. This is from this, like, mid-90s era. And uh, like many games from the mid-90s, we'll talk about this in a little bit, too. It has some political problems. Um, yeah. All, not as I many think as all of... many others, but... Yeah. I, I think all of the 90s kind of had the same kind kind of like f- attitude about political incorrectness like we're just going to do it like we're just going to make this thing super politically incorrect and it's not like clever no. like it's not like and it's not satire like you can you can try to say that this game is satirical in some way but it's really not because it's a little too like titillating to be real satire right. and like good satire like you know satire is good because you know it's satire when you see it mm-hmm. and that's not the case here but anyway there was a lot of this kind of like just real flat political incorrectness that that i don't really like anymore like i think we're more sophisticated as consumers of media now i think it also comes back to like we suddenly saw it in the 90s it was hard to see in the 80s partially due to culture but also because everything was three pixels wide right when you got to 90s you could see it there was a distinction that made things evident right Um, so and we were talking about this too there's nothing what makes this inappropriate is not what's shown but what isn't so if you're right. like, oh, they don't like, they're just, you know, prudes and they don't like any of the sexy stuff. And it's like, no, that's not it. That's, that's not. But yeah, that it's the it, only way you see other people in this game. Right. Right. There, there's two things you can do with women in this game. You can shoot them and they explode in a pile of gore. Or they can show you their tits. And that's it. Right. And like. And there's no men. So it's not like. Right. I mean, that's just what you can do with people. It's just that's it. That's all there is. But even like even even the cops, like, hey, it's they're, they're the pigs. They're cops. Yeah. LAPD. It says it on their vest. Get it? Yeah. And like, pigs. isn't that isn't that scandalous of us to do that? Like, yeah, okay. It was then. It's it not now. It, no one cares. Whatever. Yeah. Um. The thing I'll also say about this, and this is where like everyone knows that about this game. But I think that's because the porn theater and the porn store and the strip club were on levels one and two. You right. never go back to them. Right. And that it never happens again. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's it. That's it's, it. It's just like right out of the gate to kind of get you. But really the realistic environments are one of the things about this game I love. And mm-hmm. I love that the city is kind of this like gritty post-apocalyptic thing yeah. like fr- from a tone perspective i really like that oh yeah but it's like eh, you know well yeah i mean they used those two things to show that we're in the rundown beat up section of town like that was and back then like there was a movement to clean up times square in new york because there were porn stores and stuff everywhere mm-hmm. you know, there's an la district for stuff like this there was always in most big cities had some sort of district like this So Mm -hmm. this wasn't, you know, out of line. This felt real. This is where you'd go have a gunfight is next to the porn store. Now you do a presidential (laughs) conference next to it. But anyway. (laughs) Well placed. Well placed political commentary within our political commentary. I I know. It's it's, uh, stacking on stacks there. Um, And we don't want to spend too long on this because... That's it. That's that's really all there is yeah. to say about it. The rest of it's about a game that's an amazing game. Um, it really is, especially for like 1996. What's changed. that thing they say about music? Like the music you like is the music that was out when you were 18. Mm-hmm. I think that might be true about video games. And maybe that's why you like the video games of the 19... 19- uh, 50s and 60s and I think they like the <laughs> game of the 90s well it's hard to read my driver's license with my glasses anymore but I don't think 50s and 60s is what it says on it <laughs> uh, 
But anyway, a very, very good game engine. Uh, and, and before we talked about this, I did my, you know, the the shitty uh, perfunctory Googling I do. <laughs> and I found, I, I found a fantastic website. Yes. It's Ken Silverman's History of the Build Engine. It's at uh, advsys.net. We'll put it and in it's link. like it's like perfect uh late 90s early 2000s web design but it's got the whole story of of ken silverman making this game mm -hmm. and it also i also learned about ken silverman's first game which was called i believe ken's labyrinth did you just uh, learn about that well i had never i i i knew about it but i had never gone out and watched gameplay of it and and reading about it kind of motivated me to go seek it out i love the music from ken's labyrinth it's so soothing to me <laughs> i suggest everyone go out and like watch a video of ken's labyrinth and just really you know enjoy it enjoy that music that was oh. one of the mainstays of like the college computer room when i was there like a lot of people played ken's labyrinth when this should have been working. yeah <laughs> I, I never i never played it but man okay. and he like made it to get his brother off the computer he said his brother <laughs> would, wouldn't stop playing duke or wolfenstein 3d okay. and so he was like i'm or i'm gonna like make a game that captures his attention more than wolfenstein 3d and he made ken's labyrinth and then a bunch of stuff happened which you should read about on his fantastic mm -hmm. late 90s website uh because it's it's great stuff like, I, I really enjoyed uh, reading about it. And, and he throws a little shade at, uh, uh, what was that other game? Rise of the Triad in there. Yeah. That I really enjoyed. Like, he, he said he came up with the way to look up and down. And then, like, next week, mm -hmm. it was in Rise of the Triad. I will say, if you just go to advsys.net, the flash player doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so you oh, gotta yeah, you got to go to thing. slash ken slash build.htm. Yeah. HTM, yep. folks. Yeah, no, this is so late '90s website. It's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. Um, yeah, I'm super into it. But this did this did all the stuff first, right? It did slanted floors. It did looking. Yeah, uh, there's even tricks you can do to do overlapping floors. Like you can have something go around and come back on itself by. Not technically, like there still aren't platforms for you to like have things run under without them being sprite based. But mm -hmm. yeah, this this did a lot of pushing pushing game design forward coming out of Doom. Yeah, and was this before or after Rise of the Triad came out? I think it was before, right? Mm, I don't think so. Oh well, Rise of the Triad maybe technically did some of those things first, but like this is a far superior game from a design standpoint than rise of the triad yeah. like going back and playing the single player it really struck me how cogent the story was is with this because like uh the levels kind of lead into each other there's like a really clear narrative and you didn't get that in doom and you didn't get that at all in rise of the well maybe a tiny bit in rise of the triad but this is like you know at the end of this level you're gonna get arrested and put in, a, in an electric chair mm -hmm. and that starts the next level and like it's all hooked together in, in a meaningful way and there's like narrative things that kind of happen in the levels right so yeah it does feel like one cohesive like step to step to step to step to step you see yourself go into something and then you come out it on the next step um which is great uh rise of the triad was 1994 Okay. This is 1996. The thing that was hard was Quake was also 1996. Oh, yeah. And while Quake was pure 3D, I liked this better. It was colorful. It, I know the sprites were still sprites, but... Yeah. Honestly, which did the... you like better? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, what was which that? did you like better? Did you like Quake or Duke 3D better? 
I th th there was so much good about Quake. I really loved the music, and I loved how brown it was, and I loved the 3D. <laughs> I didn't love how brown it was, <laughs> but it was like it had section. nine inch nails on the <laughs> nails box, and it's like very 90s. And so it's hard to say. I think overall, I liked I liked Duke better just because of the environments. Mm -hmm. Like it, it feels richer because it's not just. I mean, the environments in Quake are super interesting, but yeah. this is like, oh, I'm in a movie theater. Right. With an arcade in it and right. a snack bar. And a pool and table like, I can play on. Quake exactly. was, I'm in a brown hallway. I'm in a right. brown hallway. And you could tell there's like some castles and some stuff, but from an aesthetic yeah. design decision, from a fun gameplay thing, from a technical standpoint, yes, Quake's better. From a which sure. did I have more fun in? Duke all the way. My jetpacks, my big stompy boots that kick guys in the face. My totally all of that. Yeah, I, I mean, I will say though that like you're play you're playing the uh, what player. what edition? Uh, the Atomic, single player Atomic edition, the one off Steam. Atomic edition, right from Steam, and it looks great because it's it's high res and everything, but. Once you play it in in high res, you really feel how spritey it is at times. Like the when you're looking around freely and there's dudes with jetpacks flying around, like they fly over you and they disappear because they are 2D yeah. as hell. And I, I don't like I know it's you're either 2D or you're not, but they feel extra 2D in this game just because of the level design. Yeah, I, I want to say we either didn't notice because we didn't have anything else at the time, or it's just something about the way it's displayed now. It There are moments where you really see the flatness. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, again, I think it's dissonance because it's high res and fast pace and it feels modern. I wonder what would happen if I kicked the resolution down, if that would help my... Maybe sickness. Maybe. Yeah, it's high res as hell. Mm -hmm. Like you can play it at whatever. You can play it probably at 4K if your monitor supports 4K. If you want to do that. <laughs> but why? <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it, it, the other thing about it that it had over Quake is, is that I I like the action movie kind of nods. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the overt sexism, but like mm -hmm. the, the rest of it is, is pretty cool. Like you're this badass dude and you're like stomping around this terrible uh, dystopian city and like you're blowing up buildings. Right. Did you take a nap during this section? Um, well, you had to go do adult went stuff for about 40 minutes and I had to take a couple breaks in there. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> I wanted to get like close as close to an hour as I could, but like, yeah, no, nah, nothing gonna happen. Oh, um, right, because of the nausea. No. I thought, I thought other breaks. No, that too, but no, this was just. I need to look away for a little bit. Um, anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but you're talking about the throwbacks to the '80s and stuff, and the action movies that came out of there. And it's one of those where, uh, is this a take on, you know? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. Is this a take on... Uh, they Live, probably. They Live. Yeah. Is this a take on Bruce Campbell as Ash from the Evil Dead? Yeah. Is this a take on Sylvester Stallone? Yeah. And you can see any of them from here. It's a really mm -hmm. good... It's all these guys together. And it's hard to tell where one stops and the others begin and it's just blended so well yeah he's an archetype and, and like if if someone were going to make a duke nuka movie which i don't think anyone should do the by don't. the way please please don't. please don't please don't please, please don't. don't it won't be good no. but i would i think john john carpenter would be the best director for the <laughs> For not the Duke Nukem movie. No, no. not Michael some Bay. some level, you know, you bull might be the best director. Of this. Yeah. No, that, that's never the answer. No, it's never the answer. Uh, neither is uh, what's Transformers guy. Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Oh, my God. I, I took a long, long break from Michael Bay movies. And then I was like, I, I'm going through kind of this renaissance of disaster movies. So I was like, I'm going to watch... 
uh, uh, mm-hmm. Armageddon. So, so my girlfriend and I sat down and watched Armageddon. Man, that thing is terrible. <laughs> Every <laughs> Michael Bay movie is terrible. I don't think there's a good one. Um, I'm sorry. It's so, okay. You know, okay. you you like what you like, right? Yeah. I mean, if you like Michael Bay, all mm-hmm. right. Like that's fine. I, I'm not. I don't want to ruin your whatever with my shitty. I think it was but... you. It was you or Troy I was talking to you about the first Transformers movie. And he's like, it's just big robots fighting themselves. I'm like, do you remember Transformers at all? It's just big robots fighting. <laughs> That's the point. That's the I, I don't want to have an argument with you about this, but that movie was terrible. I'm not saying it's a good movie. I'm saying if you went to a Transformers movie and expected drama, why? <laughs> but like compare to go back. The, here's the rest of your weekend. You're going to go watch the animated 1980s Transformers movie. And then you're going to go watch the Michael Bay Transformers movie. And you will be uh, very upset with Michael Bay. Because I even think you will be very upset with my opinion. No, Chris. You don't like the Transformers movie? Why? It's got, it's got everything you like. It's got Weird Al in it. I, it on paper, I should. It also took all my toys and threw them out the window and like brought in these weird toys that didn't look like the cars and stuff I saw and put it all on the space age vibe. So there's this like in my childhood, it destroyed my childhood. This isn't one looking back. It's like took took my Optimus Prime away. It just, yeah. yeah. I understand on like an adult level, it's better. On a kid level, which is who it's for, not better. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's fair. Like, they did totally redo all the toys after that came out. Yeah. Like, I, I grew up with Hot Rod. Right. As being one of the, like, core Transformers. But it was very much, uh, you know, Hot Rod and the Ilk were, did come after. Mm-hmm. But, man, that scene where Optimus Prime dies, like, you didn't, you didn't cry little kid tears at that? No. <laughs> All right. They took my Optimus Prime toy away. I cried, but not in the way they wanted. Um, they didn't like. They didn't come to your house and take it. You could still play with it. What are you yeah, doing? He's dead. All my friends are like, that one's dead. I even have... still playing didn't with Optimus Prime. They Poor kid here is in the last generation. Might as well play with GoBots. <laughs> Don't you hate on GoBots? <laughs> Don't you hate on GoBots and Mask? I'm not doing it with you. <laughs> mask, fantastic. Um, <laughs> we were so, so another close great to thing a thousand about subscribers, <laughs> and I just lost five hundred of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we're representing a variety of opinions on these matters. So yes, usually mine are not the popular ones, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean they're just opinions. I was gonna say, and notice we've stayed friends and don't hate each other and haven't called each other names. Yeah, well, I I mean I do call you names. Sometimes. Yeah, but you know. In a good way. Right. I got my So latte. another great thing I'll get about a blanket. Duke. We'll survive uh, yeah. <laughs> Lattes and blankets. Lattes and blankets. I'm like desperately trying to get us back on Duke Nukem and it's just not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> we're, I think we're done. <laughs> it's over. Like, well, I mean, let's talk about. So I want to talk about that, the building that you blew up a minute ago, because I, I think that is a really important moment. In, this one right here? In this game, for one, because it's like such a from a puzzle standpoint, it's like not a non puzzle, but they still try to give you a puzzle. They're like, hey, here's four buttons. Here's four what buttons. are you going to do? do? What are you going to do with those four buttons? Like, I'm going to push them until the building explodes, I guess. <laughs> right. um, but it is one of those great little narrative, like, kind of mm-hmm. moments where everything is stopped. You like are essentially stuck in the level and you have to like destroy this whole building just to get a key card. And right. that's the kind of thing that makes Duke Nukem way superior to games like Quake and even Doom because that's fun. Yeah. It, it, it sounds cool. stupid, but it's that little extra of something. It's not just a key card lying in a corner. In fact, part of the problem we're having right now is I can't find the key card to activate the thing that lets me get the key card. 
because I missed yeah. the wall panel it's in, and now I'm just stuck and like, where the hell is it? This thing is not kind. You got a big mouse cursor. On oh, the sorry. Video. That's okay. Go. Why is your mouse cursor so big? <laughs> uh, pixels, man, pixels. It's crazy. Genetics. Um, <laughs> This game is not easy and not not kind. Like they trap you and just like kill you, especially on like the next level. There's a few spots. Like you start the next level in an electric chair. Well, right. And so I'm and, gonna say one of the things I knock against this. Uh, and it's something that was in every game at the time, so it's not a direct knock at this, but it's something I'm glad to see go. When you die, it would start you at the beginning of the level without any weapons why i can save the game i'm gonna just reload the save unless i forgot to save which every time we start one of these games is exactly what happens into level two or three then i die and go oh yeah i gotta save <laughs> right yeah and re restarting with no weapons not not a realistic option in this in, right. in this thing Un unless it's the next level where you've been stripped of all your weapons anyway and that's what i was gonna say they like let you play with all the cool stuff and then they just take it all away mm -hmm. like well that sucks and then they give it mostly back to you right away so i'm like i get what you were trying to do but yeah that's kind of like a trope now isn't it mm -hmm. like there's always some some shit there you go you there found you it go. found it so here's there's the... always some yeah here's the building yeah so so you like do this and then four buttons pop up because you know any any good demolition site knows you have to secure your your demolition with four buttons. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then it's just like process of elimination. Yeah, and like there's no clue. There's nothing that tells you what to do here. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I do it on this one or not. Well, like you blow this up, you get this key card. Now there's this manhole there, and I tried shooting it a couple times, and I come back to it later. But that's a secret passage you can get in. Yeah, you, it goes under the sewer, and later you can, like, fly up mm -hmm. into it. Uh, and The level design is fantastic. That's what I was about to say. Especially for multiplayer, the level design of 1 and 2 in here is on par with the best levels ever designed. Because everywhere has multiple ways in and out. Everywhere has a way for you to sneak in or shoot your way in or run around and whatever and you can go in guns a blazing you can go in and like try and stealth snipe guys out like this mm -hmm. it does the very very difficult but very rewarding thing of being both linear and non-linear at the same time mm -hmm. because you know you know where you're supposed to go next but you can always loop back around if you miss something because you will miss things yeah. and it and uh, you're you're right especially for multiplayer that's super important it's super important, and it makes it the game very interesting to play. More, almost like a more like a, a a thinking exercise than just a run and gun, right? Because uh, it's not quite chess, but no. But what you end you up know. with is like you break line of sight from someone chasing you, and you get into a room, and now they don't know where you went, and now the whole thing starts again, and it's just that fast. You got to do a quick take them out wherever they are because if they break line of sight with you they're going to go somewhere that has multiple paths out and you're done you're you're right back to start the battleground levels and you got to try it again yeah you definitely get flow when when you're playing this multiplayer and like running from someone mm -hmm. you're like jumping through grates and like quickly dodging through doors and things it, it's really a, a great experience Let's see if this works here. Hang on. Oh, it did. Okay. Oh, here we go. I'm bringing up multiplayer. Just you guys are gonna watch Matt destroy me. All right. I did. I did kick your ass, sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, you, it's not super fair because you get nauseated. Yeah. But <laughs> like, like your your strategy in multiplayer is always the same. Yeah. Get the armor. Get the atomic health. Get the rocket launcher. Mm -hmm. Shoot the other person. Try not to shoot yourself. Right. Shoot yourself, and then repeat getting the armor and health to replenish what you just did. 
Well, and one of the things I want to comment on with this, that, like, since we just got some grief on another, another video about how we don't know how to configure DOSBox and stuff, this is what I'm talking about, about if you're going to bring an old game back and sell it today, it should just work. Even if you don't, even if you don't overhaul it, uh, it should it should work out of the box if you're packaging it. Yeah, if you've put it in a package, you know, and like I see games on Steam like from the Commodore sixty four, and I see games on Steam like Knox that's for the Apple II, mm -hmm. and you run the emulator and it works. Right. Figure right. it out. If you want to sell these, that's the experience most people expect when they get. Most people don't want to fight configuring your game before they play the game. I know that's what we used to do back in the day, but we don't anymore figure it out. Right. Like, I can I can edit a config sys. Mm -hmm. Come on. There I go. Uh, yep. And but now I've broken line of sight, and you are a gone. I am elsewhere. Uh, yeah, so you, you're right. Uh, Configuration. we just don't, we, you don't have the, people don't have the patience for it anymore, really, mm -hmm. to do that kind of in-depth, uh, configuration. I'm just so totally distracted by you're watching myself. Piece. Cause I just, I just see it from my genius mm -hmm. perspective. So now it's like. Uh, watching. flowers for Algernon, you know? <laughs> you feel yourself getting dumber watching my <laughs> uh, I joke because I love though. I you know? know, but we also have like this the final score I think was negative two to like six Nine. or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. sad. Um What were we talking about? Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were talking about packaging old games packaging and reselling old games. them. Yes, this is a fantastic remake. And, and like Duke, Duke came out for every platform. Like there was a Duke game for everything. There's a Duke game for the Switch, and that baffles me. Um, because Nintendo, and Nintendo, like I need to find out more about this because I just found out about the Switch version this morning. Yeah. And Nintendo was the one that said Mortal Kombat couldn't have blood and made Wolfenstein change the dogs into rats. Like mm -hmm. how, how does it handle this? Duke? Like, did they just give up on that war? Did they just say, you know what? You do Didn't... you, and I guess people will buy what they buy? That doesn't sound like Nintendo. Um I thought this came out for one of the other Nintendo platforms, like, you know, Nintendo 64 or something. Duke 64 in 97, this came out. And, I think and they seriously did some, like... They neutered it. They yeah. they neutered all the, uh, you know... Mm -hmm. They took out dirt. all the PC stuff. Right. Uh but I wonder what they did on the Switch. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Now, like when I've looked into it, it still says bleach bond, blonde biker bimbos on the marquee outside. So I'm not sure yeah. if they did anything anymore or if they just let it ride. Um, yeah, I think Nintendo's always going to be kid focused, but I think they've probably also realized that that's their you got to you got to have a little edge, though, sometimes. Well, right. If you want. If you want to survive. You want more adults and stuff in your stuff. But. Yeah. I think Nintendo has decided to let Sony and Microsoft fight out the 19 to 25 year old market. And they're just like, we're going to take, you know, 8 through 14. Mm -hmm. We're going to own that. Because that's when most kids are home playing games. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. I, should I am sure. just, I am just <laughs> so enamored with my playing that I, I, look at this, look at, <laughs> look at how good I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I'm gonna have okay. to like look away. I'm gonna have to look away from it's it. It's okay. I'll survive. I got my latte. <laughs> 
it was strike Com- everyone's probably wondering what game we were talking oh, about yeah, where the person commander. gave a shit it was strike commander because yeah. strike commander just isn't configured well um yeah out of the box out of the box the thing the other thing i want to talk about in this getting back to duke one of the things that makes it so much fun is the weapons are all unique and interesting and there's microwave guns and shrinking guns where you then got to run around and try and stomp on them. There's freeze rays and uh, machine guns and shotguns and rocket launchers. and it, it did, like, the thing that Rise of the Triad was kind of trying to do with the interesting guns, but it did it well, and it did it in some kind of narrative. Yes. Because in the early levels, you don't get that shit. Mm-hmm. But later in the game, you, they, like, do a good job introducing them to you, and then like letting you have them later it's it's really a good design and it, and it's interesting and it's fun and it fits with the story not like rise of the triad where it's just right. like here's god mode here's dog mode have fun mm-hmm. right and some of the weapons like there's some weapons where there's strategy behind them. even the rocket launcher there's strategy behind it because it will blow yourself up mm-hmm. but there's also pipe bombs and laser trip bombs where yes you know, setting traps and planning ahead and, and working on that is part of this game, too. It's not just how fast can you run and gun. You have options if you're one of those more campery type people. Totally. I, I adore the pipe bombs in this game. Like, the, the, it gives you so many options mm-hmm. for... You, even in single player, they're effective. Yeah. Like, they're super satisfying in multiplayer. But even in single player, like, you can... You can lure people into traps. You can use them to set off uh, traps. Yeah, one of you know my, that are designed for you. Yeah, one of my favorite like kills I remember from way back in the day because obviously not in this game <laughs> <laughs> was I filled the vent on the first level with pipe bombs, and then waited till I heard that telltale boom boom of you step on it and just hit mm-hmm. the plunger and watch like fifty pipe bombs blow up in your face and I just. Saw the text come up and go, what was that? (laughs) Yeah, that's what's great about having played this level so much is that we know every sound that the level makes. I know when I hear the of the one door out there that Mm -hmm. in a minute, I'm going to hear the of the second door into the theater and Mm -hmm. I can just like line up my shot and get you. Although now that it's so fast, it's a little harder to uh, camp and get people that way. Which is kind of a shame. It is kind of a shame because it used to take a while for you to get around to where you needed to be, and we could count on that. Um, Yeah. Now, like, if I lose sight of you, you're behind me because you literally ran around the building and got there. And so you got to really pick your camping spots if you're going to try and camp. Yeah. But that said, because we know every sound, there have been times where I've gone up, opened the door, and then just turned around and ran away. Like Totally. (laughs) Totally. But yeah, this is a, this is really at its best with multiplayer because there, there's holographic dukes. Oh, and that's so much fun. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, nice shooting. It's really a good time. Yeah, and see, I lost sight of you and I didn't know where you are going to be. And now... Yep, the, hun- the hunter becomes the hunted. Mm-hmm. And the hunt begins again. Like, I had a couple shots at you. I didn't make it work, so... Yep. Yeah, you in this in with with the rocket launcher, heavy reliance on the rocket launcher, you end up blowing yourself up a lot. A lot. But the machine gun say, doesn't do enough damage quickly. Where if you're we in were the just wrong talking spot. about the weapons. I'm sorry, were you done? I didn't mean to no, keep go interrupting for it. you. <laughs> I was gonna say that the shotgun feels a little too accurate at range. Mm-hmm. The chain gun feels a little too weak, and. Overall, I think the weapons lack punch. Yes. You don't really feel like you're blasting with a shotgun, which is a shame because this is such an action movie kind of game. Yeah, you can just live too long with this. And I think that's always sort of like my problem against you is I'll get you and I'll hit you with a couple rockets or a couple something, but that's not enough. It is Mm -hmm. enough for you to keep moving and get the hell out of there. And then turn around and bring it all raining down on top of me. Um, Yeah. 
But obviously right. there's skill involved because you consistently beat me. It's not like luck. It's not like we're at an even something. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is just the getting lucky with the speed and knowing when to shoot and when not to shoot and mm -hmm. keeping that armor full based on watching this. Yeah. No, I'm horrible with the armor, which is a big problem. I, I camp that armor a lot in the in the movie theater. Yeah. Look at you with the pipe bombs. It didn't pay off, but it was, it was oh. a nice try. <laughs> yeah. Because I have had it pay off in the past. I'm like, this will be the time. And then I sat here for a while, and I'm like, why would he come back here if I'm not out there shooting him to get him to lose health to come back here to get health? I'm like, right. Right. Never going to happen. So, uh, other things of note, John St. John is the one who does the voice for this. If you follow him on Twitter, he does unexpected Duke quotes, where he'll read something in Duke's voice that Duke probably wouldn't say, like, I'm ready for a long-term monogamous relationship. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I need to scratch my balls. You know, something like that. Duke would say that, Duke actually, say I that, think. Though, yeah. That's great. I, I should really try Twitter. Eh. I've heard a lot about it. It's it's quieter now. Um. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so. There's not, I don't think, I think most people have played this or know right. of it. So I don't think we're going to like. No. Uh, open anyone's eyes to this game or anything like no it's it, known it's a known quantity yeah if you've heard of it you're like is it good i i don't know if it's worth getting through the like controversy yeah this one actually is this one's totally it's not that big a deal it's a deal but the game is super super good and definitely try to play it multiplayer with someone if you can find a friend and yeah I will say the most Duke Nukem thing ever hmm. is uh, when you're playing this single player, there's a part where you go into the bathroom and you open the door and there's a dude taking one of the bad guys is taking a shit. Yep. And like, you know that they put they were like, we got to have someone taking a shit like we have to do it. Like, there's no <laughs> way we can make Duke Nukem and not have this guy have taking someone a shit. using so a toilet. Yeah. 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 So they did it. And, and of course, like you can you can pee and everything and like piss and like what that's it's the kind of like humor. 90s shit i was talking yeah. about yeah there's it's, like no maturity or nuance or anything about it just like yeah this guy's shitting and then you're gonna shoot him right and i think that's one of the things i heard about nukem forever that's the problem is they took that and then they said let's double down on it rather than leave it as an undertone mm -hmm. they made it made it the joke and it's like, overtone yeah like no that was never that's that should never be the point of this game like, we you, we have not talked about duke nukem forever at all no uh we also haven't mentioned auto duel yet so take a shot <laughs> um <laughs> yep thanks for watching everyone <laughs> uh yeah if we're gonna talk about shitty games <sighs> yeah Strike Commander. Strike Commander. Oh. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> Let's hurt Bully some more Pulpit people. gotcha. Crusader, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Strike Commander's not a shitty game. Strike Commander's just... not a shitty game. Crusader didn't have to be. Uh, you know. Yeah. They are what they are. We have opinions. You have opinions. Enjoy yours. Anyway. Two old men get defensive for an hour. Almost that's, always. That's what it is. Almost <laughs> always. Yep. Like I think that was what he said. Like two old men complain about a, you know, a, a revolutionary game because they can't configure it. I'm like, yeah, that's every one of our episodes. I don't understand. <laughs> right? Did you just stumble on this? Yeah. Right. Um, okay. That's Pinnacle enough of Pit. that. Let me guess. Pinnacle is kicking my ass. Pit is the one time I killed you. <laughs> the peak was absolutely. The thrill of being chased in Duke Nukem when we recorded this. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I was winning, it's still 
yeah. a total rush to know that someone is right behind you firing rockets and you got to just get up that ventilation shaft mm-hmm. and through the theater and up the into the arcade. Like, it's really exciting. Yeah. Like, you kicked my ass, but you didn't... It wasn't that you didn't earn it. I still made you work for it, and that's kind of all yes. I can ask for. Yes. Um, I think I think the... I mean, the, the pit was probably getting through like the first two levels and then realizing I didn't save there. There was a really frustrating part that I again, exacerbated by not saving where there's like a key card. It's on the prison level and you go in and you grab it and there's ammo everywhere. And then laser trip mines blow you up. Mm -hmm. And that's like, okay, like that's the game. I, I get it. But man, like I, that's when I was like, I am not saving enough. Right. Because this this is that kind of game where, you know, you would never know. I have to run in and grab that key card and run back out mm-hmm. because, you know, and they're the going to kill me. And as the levels get longer, you need to save more. Yeah. So that that was all. That was probably, you know, the the pit for me. Uh, the what pit about for you? Me was just level three, starting level three, having it all taken away. Um. It was just this reminder of, oh yeah, we're gonna do. We're we're in the '90s. We're firmly in the '90s, and this is a thing we do. Mm-hmm. And that's too bad because I, you know, other than that, I was having a really good time. Um, Pinnacle is obviously us doing this. This is just like you said. There's nothing. I don't want to say there's nothing better than sort of playing head to head because there are really good single player games and games I prefer that way. But there's a certain rush that if you've got the right people in the right game, mm-hmm. multiplayer is an incredible experience. It's and very have exciting. It work, have something from this long ago just work. Once right. we got it, Conan's to stop downloading. <laughs> right. Right. Ironically. And Conan download is a motherfucker. It's a big one. Uh, yeah, ironically, Conan was getting in the way of our Duke. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we got a type. That's for sure. <laughs> it's it's because we're so obviously testosterone amped. Yeah, dudes ourselves yeah. that we just gravitate Total toward this kind of here. Yeah. toxic masculinity. Uh, yeah, I'm late for my uh, beer pong and Jello shots or whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> right? What, is what that what you're doing with the kids do? this weekend? <laughs> Uh, I think that I think that about wraps it up for Duke, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Uh, I'm gonna shut that down. Bring this up uh, again. Short game is Night Games. I don't know that you've tried yep. it yet. I have not. Okay, you should. You've got a couple weeks, and we'll. Uh, I will definitely. Um, long game is. Well, I'm just gonna bring it up here. Here we go. Huh. What's a request? And I know nothing about it. Wyndham Classics? I've never even heard of Wyndham Classics. Are you sure this isn't a choose your own adventure book? Mm -hmm. This looks really compelling. I'm interested. Below the root. What's it say? I can't I can't read it because it's like five pixels. Do you know what it says on the box? I can find out. Um I mean don't kill yourself. I was just curious. A something something something, based on the something something by something. Yeah, I just I don't want to read it wrong and and catch a bunch of right. We don't want to alienate the audience any more than we already have today. <laughs> okay, below the root, a classic software fantasy based on the Green Sky tri- Green Sky trilogy by Zilpha Kitty Snyder. It's a wow. Classics. It's based on a novel series. Uh, it's. I think it started on the ZX and went to other platforms, if I'm remembering right. But that is where my knowledge begins and ends. It's a fantasy game that is based on a series of books, and it's been requested we look at it. I am going to get whiplash going from Duke Nukem 3D to this. It's like the opposite (laughs) of Duke Nukem 3D. Well, it was an anniversary, so, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Wanted something to kind of switch gears on us a little bit. It shows our depth, you know? It does, yeah. Because Duke certainly didn't. (laughs) (laughs) Right. 
I'm excited about this. Yeah, this will be interesting. This will be be far more interesting, so it'll be good to kind of take a look at it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I love leaving you. I love leaving you speechless. Anything else we need to talk about? Any other? We got Knox coming up. Knox. Another Knox stream this Thursday. I know some people are probably confused as to what happened, but it was a five-week January. We added an extra interview in there, so yeah, we'll get we'll get back on the cadence that no one understands when it works except mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> right. Which you do a great job time. explaining it to me and you're so patient because I ask you all because you have to do it all the time. Yeah. And I still don't I still don't get it. Because I it's one of those things that it doesn't matter. You're gonna be here. I'm gonna tell you when it is, you're gonna show up. It's gonna be fine. It's COVID. It's COVID. COVID. And it's when COVID. it's not COVID, I don't do anything anyway. So <laughs> I was gonna say we've been doing it for almost five years. COVID hasn't been that long. <laughs> no. Feels like it. It does. All right. Anything else? Any other thoughts, moans, groans, concerns? Or should we just say? I think we, we say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Thanks audience. For Thanks for sticking through it with us. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Big thank you to all of you watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, suggesting games, commenting on our videos, or supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate all of your support and look forward to sharing many more videos with you. Thank you again.